It's also interesting how much geography that you mentioned a few times affects uh, wars. The result of wars, the, the rise and fall of empires, all of it, as silly as it is. It's not the people or the technology. It's like sometimes like literally that there's rivers. <laughs> I, I think there's there's a real geographic determinism to civilization itself. I mean, you know, if you look at where civilization arose, it's in Mesopotamia and sort of a swampy land between two rivers. It's in the Nile River Delta where the same situation. Um, it's in the Indus River where you have the same thing. And it's along the Yellow Rivers and the Yangtze Rivers where it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that is geographically determined where those great civilizations of, you know, Asia, um, you know, or Europe are going to arise. Is it's, it's very much determined by that. Um, and often the course of history is, is, has that strong geographical uh, determination. I mean, you can argue that all of Egyptian, ancient Egyptian society uh, is kind of based around the cycle of the Nile flood. Because it was so predictable and everything depended on it and their whole religion actually develops around that. And in Mesopotamia, the same thing. The way their religion develops is a reaction to the particular geographic environment uh, that those people grew up in. So that's a very profound influence on civilization. Uh, one of my professors once said to me, the best map of the Roman Empire – isn't any of these maps with political borders. It would be a map that shows the zone in which it's possible to cultivate olives. So if you simply get a map and map onto it where you could grow olives during this time, let's say yeah. first century AD, it corresponds exactly, I mean really closely, to the areas that are most heavily Romanized. Now, I'm not going to say that, you know, but there is something to that where Roman culture spread successfully is where people grow the same crops. And that's yeah. just one of those fundamental things. Yeah. I mean, you so beautifully put that the perspective can change dramatically how you see history. I mean, you could probably tell world history through what? Through olives, cinnamon, and gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's <laughs> become really trendy is to look at history through objects. And I mean, for the Romans, the uh, diet is huge. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, probably 80% of the people in the Roman world ate basically a diet of olive oil, wine, um, uh, and, and wheat, right? Mm -hmm. That those three crops are, are the basic crops that they subsisted on. And <laughs> Just the way you have to grow those crops, where you grow them, that dictates so much, you know, about culture. And the Romans saw it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite uh, documents from the ancient world, and and they defined civilization that way. So the Romans, civilized people ate those crops, mm -hmm. and non-civilized people ate different food. Mm -hmm. So there's this letter from a Greek who was serving as an administrator in the Roman government, and he gets posted to Germany. Okay, to the far north. Mm -hmm. And he writes these pathetic letters back home to his family saying, the inhabitants here lead the most wretched existence of all mankind, mm -hmm. for they cultivate no olives and they grow no grapes. So to him, that yeah. was hell. Yeah. Being posted to an area where they eat these terrible foreign foods. And of course, the cliche uh, for the Romans of what barbarians eat is red meat. They're herders, so they're not farmers, but they follow herds of cow around, which is a totally different lifestyle. They eat dairy products and they drink beer. And I, I tell my students sometimes that you know if you were to stick a Roman in a time machine and send him to where we live, which I teach in Wisconsin, Green Bay, Wisconsin, that Roman would step out, look around, see all the beer, the brats, and the cheese, and say, "I know who you guys are. Yeah. You're barbarians." <laughs> barbarians. That that's another way to draw the boundary between olive oil, wine, wheat, and meat, dairy, and beer. But it, it's more fundamental because it's different forms of life. Yeah. Because if you're a sure. farmer, you grow certain crops. And if you're a farmer, you tend to stay in one place. You tend to build cities. If you're following herds of cows around, you don't build cities. You have a totally different lifestyle. So it, it's diet, but it's it's more fundamental underlying things about your entire culture. And many of the barbarians were nomadic tribes. Some of them were, yeah, definitely. Fascinating. I mean, this is just a... <laughs> Yet another fascinating way to, to dietary determinism, geographic determinism. Yeah, these things are big.